Hey there, West Michigan. Thanks for watching 13 plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barons. It has been a very snowy weekend here across the region, and really that snowfall capped off the end of the work week as well. And the cold temperatures mean the snow that's fallen is not going to go anywhere. It's going to further improve our chances for a white Christmas, which is already looking like a lock in when we look at the next 10 days of more snowfall on the way before the Christmas holiday. Speaking of that snowfall, here's the totals that we've had reported since Thursday night as high as 17.2 inches in Granville 16.2 here at the station in Walker. We've seen Grand Rapids over a foot as well to 14.6 Fremont 9 and Muskegon also coming in at 9 inches Holland just over a foot at 12.5 many locations across West Michigan. In fact, over that one foot mark, it has really been a pretty memorable lake effect system that came through and one that will certainly leave us uh, dealing with the snow for days to come. We also set some records yesterday for December 17th record daily snowfall for the date 10.4 inches fell at the Grand Rapids Airport that smashes the old record of 5.4 from 1951 almost doubled that old record quite a bit of snow fell across the region. Of course, if you have any photos of the snow or reports to pass along, you can send them to us on social media. Find me meteorologist Michael Barron's on Facebook and at Mike Barron's WX on Twitter and on Instagram. The temperatures out there today hit 28 in Grand Rapids, 32 in Muskegon, 30 in Holland should be around 35 this time of the year, but that temperature below average was right on target with the forecast. Told you a high of 28. We hit 28 for today, bringing the accuracy streak to five days in a row, three of those being bullseyes and only five misses in the last month of forecasting. 13 weather balls still lit up in green as no change for seen to this cold weather pattern. Expect more 20s as we head through tomorrow. View of the 13 weather balls sponsored by Tullymore Golf Resort. As of about 9 o'clock, temperatures were hanging around in the mid 20s in West Michigan with wind chills that were in the teens. Those wind chills will remain cold throughout the night as winds continue around 5 to 15 miles per hour, but the wind will back down some as we head toward tomorrow. As of about 9 o'clock, the winds were still a little breezy at times, especially in the lake shore where those gusts could still reach over 20 for the next couple of hours. As we head through the overnight tonight, temperatures will fall to the low 20s under cloudy skies, staying pretty cloudy for tomorrow as well. But I think by the end of the day, we may peak out a little bit of sunshine, but it won't last long as clouds build back again Monday night. High 27 tomorrow will be up to 31 on Tuesday. Tuesday with some scattered snow possible. Most of that will be Grand Rapids and areas to the north with only a little accumulation expected. This one not going to be very impactful. The radar across the Great Lakes was pretty quiet until you got up to the northern portions of lower Michigan where they were still dealing with lake effect snow. The same in the UP, but you can see that clearing in the skies back out towards southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. That will work its way toward us as we head into the overnight hours tonight and into Monday. We're still cloudy by sunrise Monday, but you can see by the afternoon those clouds have broken up. As we go into Monday night, though, things do start to change. We're watching that snow start to work its way toward us by the overnight hours. Scattered snow possible again, mostly Grand Rapids to the north as we head through early Tuesday. This will wrap up by Tuesday afternoon and cloudy to mostly cloudy skies will stick around Tuesday night and into the day on Wednesday. Things start to change again, though, as we head toward Wednesday night, and this time it's going to be a lot more impactful. So here we start out Wednesday morning, 9 o'clock, cloud cover firmly in place. We're still quiet by Wednesday evening, but as we work our way into Wednesday night, that's when we start to see our first round of a little bit of snow come in. Much like what we have for Tuesday, this is mostly going to be Grand Rapids to the north, but that'll change as we get into Thursday. Thursday brings in some warmer air wrapping around this system, and widespread wintry mix will be possible across West Michigan. That will start to turn to snow as we head into Thursday night, and cold air comes around the other other side of that low pressure system, widespread and heavy snowfall looking quite likely as we head toward Friday. And we got to keep a close eye on this system because this has really a lot of potential to dump heavy snow across West Michigan. It's going to be very impactful regardless of how much falls, but there's two models we're keeping an eye on right now. The one we just showed you here and the other one that has most of Thursday being snow as well. So if that happens, we are really looking at an impactful system coming 
heading our way. And even if this one plays out with the mix on Thursday, the snow continues not just Friday, but through most of the day Saturday being enhanced by lake effect conditions and even into Sunday before the lake effect turns off. So as we head toward the Christmas weekend, if you have any last minute traveling to do, you're really going to need to pay attention to this forecast because again, we're looking at a pretty impactful snow system that's going to be heading our direction. So keep an eye on that forecast. That's later in the week though, so let's go ahead and start out with tomorrow. Temperatures will be in the 20s along the lakeshore. Upper 20s for most will be a little cooler as we head toward the inland counties with mid 20s expected for Monday afternoon. Mid to upper 20s in the forecast for Grand Rapids down to Kalamazoo. 13 on your side, 10 day outlook. Temperatures in this forecast stay at or below freezing, so the snow that we picked up this weekend and will pick up early this week, that's not going to go anywhere. All eyes will be on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, though, as heavy snowfall expected before the Christmas holiday. I would say at this point, it's pretty much 100%. We're going to see a white Christmas here in West Michigan. Well, it's no secret that drought in the western United States has been causing bodies of water to drop in terms of their water levels for the past several years, but those drops are now revealing some long lost secrets. Cade Garner from ABC affiliate KTVX has this report from Great Salt Lake. In terms of surface water, the Great Salt Lake has now shrunk by about half and hidden treasures from eras gone by are making their way to the surface. It's very exciting to see a piece of history there that people can come out and see, but it's also sad that the lake is this low, that we've got trouble out here, problems. Great Salt Lake Park manager Dave Shearer has been with the park for more than two decades, and for the first time in at least 70 years, a lost ship, the W.E. Marsh No. 4, is back on the lake's surface. It's leaning over on its side, and you're seeing the starboard side of the hull, and you're, you can see the whole hull. Other wrecks, like this one, have also surfaced, but not all are as intact as the newly surfaced W.E. Marsh, which allowed for Shearer to learn about its past. And this was one of the first boats that came out here in 1902 to build the trestle, so it was ferrying people back and forth to the work site, or it was also used to haul or push uh, barges around. Looking at it now, just feet from the shore, it's hard to imagine the role this boat played in the development of industry in Utah, but it played a big one. The 40-foot boat was part of the Southern Pacific Railroad's fleet, used during the construction of the Lucent Cutoff Railroad trestle. In 1936, it was used to find the remains of a plane crash that killed three, and was then gifted to the Sea Scouts. To teach uh, young kids uh, the art of uh, boating, and also for our committee boat for races and other programs. Around 1950, the boat disappears from the history books, with no record of how it sunk or if anyone was on board. And as the lake continues to shrink, more history is likely to be revealed. There's a rich history out here. There's a lot of wrecks out here on the Great Salt Lake that have uh, started to surface, and it's really interesting to go out there and see them. Reporting from the Great Salt Lake, Cade Garner, ABC4 News. Finally tonight, let's take a look at some trending stories. Three camels went on an adventure through the Australian city of Brisbane. They were part of a live nativity play, but the trio must have had stage fright because they opened the gate to their enclosure. And they escaped. They caused some traffic confusion as they wandered the city. The camels were eventually caught by police after they stopped to eat some grass on the side of the road. Then the escapees were safely returned to their owner. Have you ever wondered why Santa wears red? Well, you're not alone. Early descriptions of Santa never revealed what color he wore, just that he had rosy cheeks, a beard as white as snow, and dressed in fur. In the mid-1800s illustrations, they show Santa wearing stars and stripes and yellow, but no red. It wasn't until the early 1900s that red became Santa's signature color. That's thanks in part to decades of Coca-Cola ads that started in the 1930s and he's been dressed in red ever since. And we've been hearing Christmas music on the radio and in stores since Thanksgiving, but after a while, some of those songs really don't have their appeal anymore. But what songs do people find particularly annoying? A recent survey found that Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas Is You takes the top spot as the most overplayed Christmas song. Jingle Bells, Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer, and Santa Baby were also high on the list. Certainly getting tired of hearing some of those songs out there in the 
the stores. But hopefully you're not tired of watching 13 plus because it's online 24 7 365 days a year and we keep you up to date with the latest news and weather information right at your fingertips. But if you want more, you can always find it at 13 on your side.com or by downloading 13 on your side news and weather apps. But for now, thanks for watching. I'm meteorologist Michael Barron's.